Katribu, have you ever seen Ta'al Volcano? It is one of the most beautiful and iconic sites in the Philippines. Nestled within a larger lake in Batangas, this famous volcano has its own crater lake, creating a unique island in a lake on an island in a lake. On an island in a lake. For many years it has been a source of wonder for tourists, and a source of livelihood for the communities living around it. But behind its breathtaking beauty lies a powerful force of nature. Ta'al is the second most active volcano in our country, a constant reminder that the ground beneath our feet is very much alive and always changing. Its history is filled with powerful eruptions that have shaped the land and the lives of the people around it for centuries. Before the events of October 1st, 2025, the volcano was not entirely quiet. It was like a sleeping giant, occasionally stirring and showing signs that it was awake. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOLSAS, our dedicated bantai for volcanoes, had been keeping a very close watch. They are the experts who understand the language of volcanoes. In the days leading up to the eruption, they noted several important clues. These signs are like a person's vital signs when they are not feeling well. The volcano was telling us something was happening deep inside, and the scientists were listening very carefully to its whispers, preparing for what might come next. The scientists at FIVOLX use amazing technology to monitor our volcanoes. Imagine doctors with special instruments checking on a patient. They measured the temperature of the main crater lake, which had reached a very warm 68.7 degrees Celsius. That is much hotter than the water we use for bathing. They also detected sulfur dioxide, a type of gas that smells like a burnt matchstick, being released from the volcano. The amount recorded was 563 tons per day, as of September 27. These high temperatures and gas emissions are classic signs that magma, or molten rock, is moving and heating things up from below the surface of the Earth. Another important sign was the ground itself. Fivolx reported that the land on Tall Volcano Island was swelling or slightly bulging. Think of it like a balloon being slowly inflated from underneath. The surface has to stretch and expand. This swelling happens when magma pushes up from deep within the earth, causing the ground above it to deform. Along with this, they recorded two volcanic earthquakes. These are not like the usual earthquakes we feel. They are caused by the movement of magma and fluids underground. All these signs together painted a clear picture. Tal was in a state of low-level unrest. The calm of the early morning on Wednesday, October 1st, 2025, was suddenly broken by the voice of the volcano. While most of the surrounding communities were deep in their sleep, Tal began to stir in a much more dramatic way. According to the official timeline from Thebox, the event started just before 2 o'clock in the morning. Specifically, the eruption was recorded to have begun at 2.02 a.m. It was a Frieto magmatic eruption, when hot magma comes into contact with water. In Tal's case, the superheated magma met the water in its crater lake, creating a violent burst of steam and volcanic materials. Not a long event, a short, powerful burst from the main crater. Fivolx reported the eruption lasted just 13 minutes, ending at 2.15 a.m. Fivolx monitoring equipment captured every moment seismographs, cameras, and instruments. Volcanologists analyzed the data immediately to inform the public and government. During those 13 minutes, the volcano released a tall column, ash, steam, gas. This is called a plume. Imagine a giant dark cloud shooting straight up from the crater. Five Volks measured the plume at 2,500 meters, as tall as several skyscrapers stacked together. The direction of the wind at that time was very important, as it determined where the contents of the plume would go. The agency noted that the plume drifted in a northwest direction, carrying ash and volcanic gases over the nearby areas. After the main eruptive burst concluded at 2.15 a.m., the volcano did not immediately fall completely silent. A weaker plume was observed afterward, rising about 500 meters and drifting toward the southwest. 
This showed there was still activity happening within the crater, even after the primary explosion was over. The initial burst to the lingering plume showed the volcano's unpredictability. A reminder. Even at low alert, a volcano can strike with little warning, especially at night. So, what exactly did our friends at Feevolk see? Let's break down their scientific findings into simpler terms. Knowledge is power, Katribu. First, they observed a massive plume, a column of hot gas, ash, and steam. The plume soared 2,500 meters high. That height shows the explosion was energetic. The plume carried fine volcanic ash and volcanic gases and drifted northwest, causing thin ashfall and a distinct smell in downwind towns. This matters for warning airplanes in nearby communities. Another key piece, sulfur dioxide, or SO2. Fivolks measured 563 tons per day before the eruption. That level signaled magma was shallow beneath the crater, like steam from a boiling pot. Then, volcanic earthquakes. Two were recorded before the eruption, smaller tremors from magma and fluids moving underground. Imagine rocks cracking as hot liquid forces its way through them. Even a small number of quakes, plus gas emissions, plus ground swelling, help scientists build the full picture. It's like a doctor listening to a heartbeat. Finally, slight swelling, inflation, of tall volcano island, detected only with precise instruments like GPS or INSAR. The ground was bulging upward, like a bubble. That pressure buildup is a critical warning sign. All these factors, the plume, the gas, the quakes, the swelling, are the volcano's pulse. Fivolx was reading it loud and clear. Following the eruption, Fivolx announced that Tal Volcano would remain under alert level 1. Now this might sound like a low number, but it's really important to understand what it truly signifies. Alert level 1 does not mean everything is normal. In fact, it actually means the exact opposite. It indicates that the volcano is in an abnormal condition and is experiencing low-level unrest. It's the first step on a warning ladder that goes up to alert level 5, a hazardous eruption in progress. So, alert level 1 is saying, pay attention. The volcano is not stable. Something could happen. This alert warns everyone, government and residents. A major eruption isn't imminent, but further activity is very real. Authorities, guided by Fivolx, use this to enforce safety measures. It's a proactive step to prevent loss of life and property. We need to be prepared and follow official announcements. Ignoring alert level one is like ignoring a yellow traffic light. Danger can escalate fast. Authorities reiterated strict safety protocols. The most important, no entry to tall volcano island. It is a permanent danger zone. No entry especially near the main crater. No entry at the Dang Castilla fissure. The greatest danger is closest to the source. People on the island could be caught in a sudden explosion with no time to escape. This rule saves lives and must be respected. The government warned of other hazards. Even without a big eruption, dangers persist. Sudden steam-driven explosions can occur without warning, also called phreatic explosions. These can hurl rocks and hot steam over a wide area. There is also the risk of more volcanic earthquakes, which could be felt by nearby communities. Continuous emission of toxic gases like sulfur dioxide can be harmful to people, animals, and plants, especially in high concentrations. For that reason, flying aircraft near the summit is strictly prohibited to avoid engine damage from ash and gas. The October 1st eruption of Tall Volcano, though minor and brief, serves as a powerful and timely lesson for all of us. It really underscores the undeniable fact that we live in a geologically active country, and the forces of nature demand our constant respect and attention. The event highlights the critical importance of staying alert and being prepared. Complacency can honestly be our greatest enemy when living near an active volcano. We must never underestimate the power that lies dormant beneath such beautiful landscapes. Vigilance is not about living in fear. 
but about being empowered with knowledge and readiness, ready to act when the need arises. This event also shines a bright light on the incredible work of our scientists at FIVOLX. Their tireless, round-the-clock monitoring and their ability to interpret the subtle language of the volcano are our first and best line of defense. Listening to their expert advice and heeding their warnings is not just a good idea, it is a matter of life and death. When they establish a permanent danger zone or issue an alert level, it is based on rigorous scientific data aimed at keeping everyone safe. We must trust in science and follow the guidance of our official agencies, as they are the ones equipped with the tools and expertise to navigate these natural hazards. Let us also remember the communities that call the Ta'al region their home. For them, the volcano is both a source of life and a persistent threat. Their resilience in the face of uncertainty is truly admirable. It is our collective responsibility to support them, not just during an eruption, but every day. This means supporting policies that promote safe and sustainable livelihoods, investing in community-based disaster preparedness programs, making sure that evacuation plans are clear, efficient, and well-practiced. Caring for these communities is a reflection of our national spirit of Bayanihan, of coming together to help one another in times of need. In conclusion, the story of the 2025 Tal eruption is a chapter in the volcano's long and active history. It reminds us that Tal is awake and that we must be too. Let us continue to stay informed through official channels, to value the role of science in our safety, and to foster a culture of preparedness and compassion. By understanding the risks and working together, we can coexist with the magnificent yet formidable power of Ta'al Volcano, ensuring the safety and well-being of all Filipinos for generations to come. Knowledge is our best defense. Always be ready, Katribu.